Now on 767 News, an act to level a playing field between private sector and government goes into effect. Charges withdrawn in the firebombing case involving Earl Seckle Grant and former magistrate Gon Emanuel. And police search for a missing Portsmouth woman. In sports, Dive Dominica, Hallam United secures major victory. Welcome everyone, I'm Alicia George and you're watching 767 News. We'll be back with the latest stories and developments after this break. The Caribbean can feel like paradise, yet natural hazards do come our way. During eruptions, millions of tons of ash and rock fall on the flanks of the volcano. The next heavy rain may bring this material down the valley and destroy much in its path. This phenomena is called mud flow or lar. Lars are very dangerous. After an eruption, avoid crossing valleys during and following heavy rainfall. Welcome to Court's Digital World, where we have the widest range of digital products from the world's best brands, televisions, tablets, laptop computers, mobile phones, and much more. Connect, explore, engage. I know it is confusing out there with so many prizes and so many stores, and you are trying to figure out how to do the maths on savings. Well. Don't worry, we will do the maps for you. It is our business to deliver the best product at the best prices. So when you shop at Astrofans, you don't need to do the maps. We have done it for you. And best of all, take the savings and use it to pay for something else, helping you save money. That's our business. This is the new DL750, made to fit your lifestyle, whatever shape it takes. The new KitKat OS means it's faster and easier to enjoy the apps you love like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube with colored covers you can change to match your lifestyle. A 5 megapixel camera with an amazing flash to capture the moments that matter wherever you are. The new DL750. Lighter, smarter, brighter. Digicel. Welcome back. The Public Procurement and Contract Administration Act, a document which seeks to level the playing field between the private sector and the government as it relates to the buying and selling of goods and services, went into effect today Thursday, according to Section 1 of the 110 section document. But what should be good news for the private sector seems to have been downplayed by the government, according to Anthony Lebla, Vice President of the Builders and Contractors Association of Dominica, BCAD. There should be in place, of course, things to prevent the government from wasting time to advertise things like soap powder. But as of this day, when the acts are supposed to come into force, um, the public, the private sector, from whom the government buy everything, has not been sensitized as to what the regulations are, what the procedures are, in order to continue to sell to the government. Lebla has come down on the government for the lack of public sensitization of the bill. He said, as of today, it cannot be business as usual for the Dominica government and the private sector. All purchases from the government, whether it's to buy toilet paper, whether it's to buy a car, whether it's to buy construction material, whether it's to hire a contractor, have to be done in conformity with the Act. It means that, according to the Act, Nothing can be purchased until it follows the requirement of the Act. And, and as Section 34 says, that the, the, the normal means of asking people to solicit prices to the government is by open competitive basis. And, and this should not exclude anybody, that everybody who has the ability, who is eligible to sell to the government, whether it's skills, uh, whether it's services, whether it's goods, whether it's construction services, have to be given that opportunity without discrimination. 
Lebla said although there is a minimum amount at which the government can legally make purchases, anything above that amount would be illegal because the proper procedures would have been ignored. If the government choose not to advertise to buy supporter, for example, then the government have to be able to select persons who are qualified to supply supporter and who are able. Now, under Section 45, the government needs to prepare a list that is governed by the board under Section 10. In order to do that, the government has to advertise that it needs people to pre-qualify themselves to be small suppliers. Um, none of that has been done. The BCAD vice president told 767 News that the Central Procurement Board and the Central Procurement Unit are the entities responsible for administering procurements and sensitizing the private sector. However, efforts to contact the authorities within these groups remain unaddressed. According to Libla, no effort has been made by the government to meet with the private sector. There had been one attempt or one date set aside by the by the financial secretary November 17th, I believe, to have a public sector, private sector interaction with the public sector in the procurement bill. That meeting was cancelled. And in spite of Bicard and the Dominica Business Forum writing earlier this month asking for another date, um, there have been no attempt. Libla said anyone who is considered eligible under the Act should be given an opportunity so that the government receives a maximum returns for every dollar spent. The overall purpose, he said, is to reduce taxation. And the state has taken the decision to withdraw a charge of conspiracy to commit arson against Earl Seckle Grant. Grant was implicated in a confession by Denny Schillingford, who said upon orders from Grant, he firebombed the home of former magistrate Gon Emanuel on Christmas Eve of 2010. The matter has been before the court for a number of years. Both Grant and Schillingford had been placed on bail with strict conditions, including surrendering their passports. During the trial headed by the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution, at least five persons testified, including Schillingford and the investigating officer. After weeks of trial and witness statements, Magistrate Bernard Parkett on Wednesday informed Grant that the prosecution had failed to prove its case against him and the matter was therefore dismissed. Grant was represented by Trinidadian attorney Gilbert Peterson, SC, and Heather Felix Evans. In other stories, the family of Mariette Baptist is seeking the public's cooperation in finding her. Baptist left home on Tuesday, January 20th, 2015, and hasn't returned since, leaving her family members worried. Baptist, who is approximately 5 feet 2 inches, was wearing a brown top, white pants, and a brown cloth covering her head. She is a former teacher at the Seventh-day Adventist School, whose career was cut short following a stroke she suffered in 2011, which left her right hand partially motionless and her face slightly deformed. The missing teacher's complexion is light-skinned. She has average length natural hair, black, and a slight case of freckles on her face. Reports are that she was spotted on Wednesday at approximately 6 p.m. walking in a southerly direction near Digicel in Portsmouth. Baptist is the daughter of former teacher at the Roosevelt Douglas Primary School, Mali Baptist, and is the sister of the 2010 Carnival Queen, Marcia Baptist. Anyone who has information on her whereabouts and spots her is asked to call the Portsmouth Police Station or telephone number 445-5222 and Manette Baptist on telephone number 245-4721. In other news, the Vosch IK mission had their hands filled on Thursday as they made a stop in Roseau at the Goodwill Parish Hall where a large crowd assembled for free eye examinations. Reports are that individuals began arriving at the avenue from as early as 4 a.m. in the hopes of beating the influx of people who were expected to visit. Vosch IK mission leader Dr. Dan Werbel said this year signals the 21st year of the annual event which is organized with the Rotary Club. The idea is to come down and do eye screenings and give glasses to those in the most need. Bosch really is, is serving either a, it, because of geography, you can't get to an eye clinic, or because you don't have the funds to pay for the glasses. Um, we also, the number one level in Bosch is just doing screens, giving glasses. Number two is when you can triage eye disease too, so we also do that. We triage cataracts and glaucoma. 
the fleshy grows called pterygium, diabetic retinopathy, hypertensive retinopathy. And then we send that to Dr. Ricketts, Hazel Ricketts at the Princess Mar Margaret Hospital. And then she takes our referrals and, and does the advanced eye care. Dr. Rubble added the team conducted eye care screenings in La Plaine, Casa Bruce, Sally Bear, Mahu, Kalinago Territory, and Point Michel. Meanwhile, the mission was visited by the President, His Excellency Charles Savre, who praised them for their work. This annual visit by the Bosch team in collaboration with the Road Trip is a tremendous community service that is being arranged in a very vital area of the health of the people of Dominica. Uh, I'm always amazed, this is the second time as president, uh, but it's the second time absolutely that I have in fact visited a Gorsh clinic. And the last time and this time, I am tremendously amazed by the number of people who have come to be screened and to be treated, receive glasses or whatever the case may be. President Saver said he was fascinated by the large turnout in Roseau, seeing that the mission has been making stops in various communities since Monday. I think we have to express our appreciation, first of all, to the road trippers who are the sponsors uh, of this uh, activity year after year, and the Bosch volunteers themselves who come uh, to Dominica and I, elsewhere, I presume, to offer uh, that service. Uh, if there is uh, one benefit to them, uh, I would say, apart from the interaction and the fact that we get to meet people and so on, I would say that if I were living in Minnesota or any part of North America, I would look forward to coming to the Caribbean at this time of year. Uh, because all you have to do is to look at the weather reports and you know that there's a deep freeze in North America. So coming to the Caribbean would be wonderful, but that is not to detract in any way from the excellent service uh, that is being given to the people of Dominica on a voluntary basis. And I think I want to emphasize this question of voluntarism because the Vosh and the Rotary Club themselves, because the Rotary as a service organization are all volunteers. So volunteerism is alive and well in Dominica. The Vosh IK mission will leave the island on Sunday. Vosh mission donates $25,000 towards IK as it celebrates 21 years of existence. Find out more details when we return. We're having a huge tax sale at Quartz, which means you can get great deals and save up to 60% off selected items across the store. Sale starts January 17th. Shop with cash or use ready finance with nothing down and nothing to pay for 30 days. Save big with up to 60% off at the Quartz January tax sale. While stocks last, only at Quartz, bringing value home. Fiesta sausages are about to rock your breakfast world. Stock up with plenty of Fiesta sausages because as soon as you serve your family a breakfast with Fiesta sausages, they disappear. And you have to keep adding more and more Fiesta sausages. So you better have lots of Fiesta sausages in your kitchen cupboard. Buy them by the dozen and they come in regular and hot and spicy. The whole family can enjoy Fiesta sausages. Ask the best. Right place, right price. During eruptions, huge quantities of ash are thrown into the atmosphere and fall all around. As ash blankets the landscape, it can trigger breathing problems, contaminate food and water, and collapse roofs when thick and wet. In case of ash falls, stay inside or wear dust masks and goggles. Avoid driving. If ash is too thick on the roof, wash it up safely or evacuate. During research and preparation for a training session on bartending I did recently, I used the opportunity to capture a few concepts for practical training using Digicel's super fast broadband service. Using some YouTube videos, I'm able to provide a more comprehensive demonstration of cocktail preparation and service. As a restaurant also, I use some renowned beverage sites for greater insights and new trends in food and especially beverage production and service. 
thus providing a higher quality service to our lovely customers at Old Stone. I'm also able to provide a better balance of local cuisine, plate design and service as a result of some cooking channels I use. This adds great value to the finished product that we are well renowned for at the Old Stone Grill and Bar. Sign up today for Digicel Play Superfast Broadband Internet Service. Thanks for staying with us. Volunteer Optometry Services for Humanity, VOSH, and the Rotary Club of Dominica have continued their annual donation of eye care services and contributions of eye care equipment to institutions across Dominica as part of its 21st VOSH mission. The donation includes eye drops, artificial tear drops, and other eye medication, which will be housed at the Princess Margaret Hospital. In addition, the team provided free eye care checkups to citizens at various health centers, including La Plaine, Casa Bruce, Salibier, Maho, Point Michel, and the Goodwill Parish Hall. On Wednesday, the two groups also gathered at the Fort Young Hotel, where they held their annual press conference. Dr. Van Rubble, head of the Vosch Mission, said this year the group donated about $25,000 worth of eye care medication. There's about $25,000 worth of special medication that we have used some of thus far in our service treating patients, but um, mainly the majority of it goes to Princess Margaret Hospital Eye Clinic, and hopefully through um, Dr. Hazel Ricketts' efforts, she can uh, better take care of care for the people of people with more medical eye problems. The donation was presented to Chief Medical Officer Dr. David Johnson, who said it would be interesting to measure the economic and social impact of Vosch's contributions throughout the years. What you have done in terms of um, providing eye care to the citizens of Dominica is in sync with the priority of the government of Dominica in terms of providing eye care to Dominica and in fact helping us to achieve our Vision 2020 goal. So I really want to say thank you on behalf of the government and people of Dominica for your wonderful contribution and the tangible contribution in this form of, a, of, of donation uh, in terms of eye care materials and eye drops to the, to the government of, and people of Dominica. The Rotary Club of Dominica teamed up with the Rotary Club of Eaton Rapids, Michigan, USA, 21 years ago to mount an annual VOSH mission to Dominica, which has been successful since its inception. On average, over 1,500 people receive complete eye examinations each year and prescription eyeglasses and sunshades are dispensed on each visit. Honorable Minister for Health, Dr. Kenneth Daru, who was present at the press conference yesterday, agreed with the Chief Medical Officer on the importance of the donation and its alignment with the government's administrative policies. And whilst we understand that optimal health care does come at a cost, in some cases tremendous cost, and even basic health care comes at a cost, we really think it's commendable when organizations such as yours can reach out and make this and make a difference in someone's life because I'm pretty sure that I mean quite a few of the people who've been beneficiaries of your service, especially the actual prescription glasses, would not otherwise have been able to afford such. And um, we can be a testimony to the to the number of to the number of citizens that we have assisted as a government and we're really glad to have Washington on board to really make this um, to really make it easier for us. Bosch is an organization dedicated to the provision of eye and vision care services for those who are below the poverty level and without access to local eye care. The mission, which began from Monday, January 19th, ended today, Thursday, January 22nd. All individuals who will be part of the 2015 opening roadshow parade on Saturday are being asked to be on time and prepared as the event will begin on time from the Pottersville Savannah. Deputy Chairperson of the Road Parade Committee, Charlene White Christian, said these individuals being there on time is essential to the parade beginning on time. Now we are asking the music trucks, all music trucks and music systems who have been contracted for that day, we're asking them not to gather on the savanna or on the basketball court, but to gather along the road. Um, you, they will be directed when they get to the venue. So we are asking all those with floats, the queens, the princesses, the teens, and so forth. We are asking you to get your floats there early by 1 p.m. so that we can place them in the correct order. What we have noticed for the past few years is some of the floats come very late. The girls are there, but the floats are not there. 
and then we have problems in placing them in the parade. So we're asking this year that you comply and get your vehicles there early enough with your driver, of course. Even though the contestant is not th there yet, but we ask you to get there with your vehicle and the driver by 1 p.m. so that we can place you accordingly in the parade. Christian is also advising the public to respect the road marshals who consist of high school students who volunteer their time to assist in the organization of the parade and crowd control. She stated in previous years, they have been insulted and belittled, which is unacceptable. The public is also being advised to stay on the sidewalk at all times to ensure the free flow of the parade and anyone who is found to be disruptive will be dealt with by the police authorities. When the parade is being, is on the route, we're asking that no throwing of items be done from any floats. And I repeat, no throwing of items, of souvenir items of any kind should be done from any floats by any contestant. We will ask the police to stop you immediately. We are asking those with floats with contestants to have a small group of persons walk alongside your float. And these will be the persons handing over the items to the public because we don't want anyone rushing to the vehicles. This can cause accidents. People's feet have already gone on the tires, on the wheels, and so so far, we want to avoid those. We want a nice, safe opening. So we're asking no throwing of items from the vehicles. Your little crew of, if it's four or five persons, to be along with you, and they will just hand over those things to the, to the public. Christian said this year's parade has a total of numerous old mass groups, flag waivers groups, schools with a band, and of floats, which translate to a lengthy parade. When it comes to the Bayfront, we're asking everyone to please comply with the rules. The vendors who have already registered, in, you have to register with the DFC because you will only be allowed to vend on the Bayfront if you are given permission by the DFC. So you have to come in to register. There are some people with their own booths on the Bayfront and they just figure that they could come in and set up shop. We will ask the police to remove you. So we are asking if you have an idea and you want to vent, please come to the DFC because we will give you the location because you can only be on the base side. No vending will be allowed on the other side. All vending will be on the base side. The DFC will give you all instructions for that. And we have a reason for that because this, area, this side here, we are leaving that free for quite a few things. The groups, when they come from the opening parade, the senses and so, they need an area for them to rest. So we're looking at the area of the Roseau City Council. For the ambulance, we're going to have an ambulance station next to Nassif. All right, so we cannot have smoke in that area. So that is why we are putting the vendors on the side of the bay. The ambulance station is going to be around there and most likely maybe a Red Cross station as well. The opening parade is scheduled to begin at 3 p.m. Now, after Field the Cicero Hotel on Wednesday night as the Stardom Tent hosted its original Tug of War event, 30 Calypsonians paired up in double teams, putting on an exceptional performance. Of course, the crowd was a judge for the night. Who do you think win? Who do you think win? Hardline. Who do you think win? Hard line win, but Hexy for the for my rudeness. Calypsonians Hunter and Scranter had the crowd going wild with their comical duet. But I really did warn them about Sikiri. Sikiri really did work to their sleep. The man was all over the community, even helping people to hang panty. When I hear he carried a shin, I tell myself this man did deserve to win. Hunty boy, I find you to dumble fist. You know them wealthy papa made a mistake. He went and said how he locked Sikiri outside. But all the time Sikiri inside taking a ride. If you lock a gate, you must have the key. And I shot and bros now will agree with me. Why Tiki we up there hanging all the panty? And bros just spinning his eye up. 
Saddam Tent will continue with events including the Calypso Royalty Night, the Make or Break Elimination for the Monarch of the Tent, the Monarch of the Tent, and finally, the Man Himself Trophy. The Man Himself Trophy is in honor of late Calypsonian Freddie Man Himself Menz, who died last year. Telecommunication company Digicel is the sponsor of this year's Saddam Tent. You can't travel, you come back. Take that back. I can go, right? <laughs> Mr. Politician, let me tell you something. You are not above the law. Mr. Politician, let me tell you something. This is crab back I go charge you for. So wherever you get this blasted crab back, you and your suitcase better get back. Today you are not traveling at all. We am the boss man, I go make you feel small. Brother Hunter, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I was taking it for a friend, for my lady. Is it my wife that put the thing in the bag? And believe me, I feel bad, I really feel bad. And that's it for local news. The latest in sports news is coming up next with Larry, so stay tuned. Digicel Play wishes to advise all customers of ongoing upgrade works on our network across Dominica. We are aware that some customers may be experiencing interruptions in their service. Please be informed that the ongoing works will be carried out over the next few months as we upgrade to the next generation of broadband technology. As such, we apologize for any inconvenience caused. Our technical team will attempt to reduce any outages to a minimum. We thank you, our customers, for your patience and look forward to launching new products to Dominica over the coming months. Good evening and welcome to 767 Sports. In tonight's coverage, we begin with football. Dive Dominica Harlem United went on a goal spree last night with a 9-1 victory over South East Stars in the Dominic Women's League at the Newton playing field. Naima Africa registered a hat-trick with Onisha Deluge and Aliyah Tid scoring two each. Hiverna Amable and Joel Brown scored one each, while Eflin Lockhart scored a lone goal for Southeast. Meanwhile, in the Division I league last night, Mao Soka strikers failed to show up for their match against Porters in the first match of a doubleheader at the Buffested playing field. In the second match, Kenfield FC and Waki Rollers played to a goalless draw. In volleyball, we go to Kyron George, Public Relations Office of the Dominic Amateur Volleyball Association, DAVA, who in an interview on Monday spoke on the importance of volleyball on the island. And in cricket, the West Indies Cricket Board on Thursday clarified a number of issues relating to West Indies cricketer Kiran Powell, who recently issued a statement following his request for absence of leave due to personal reasons and subsequent unannounced departure from the team. According to the statement, at no time was any officer of the WICB or team management furnished with the details of Powell's personal issues. However, contrary to Powell's repeated allegation, at no time did the WICB issue any media release or any other communication stating that he was caught from the West Indies team. The WICB said in all its communication with the media and public, they consistently respected Powell's request to treat his matters as private. The WICB extends best wishes to Powell in all his endeavors as he works on regaining a place on the West Indies team and consistent with previous offers, stands ready to assist as necessary. And that's it for tonight's sportscast. Tune in again tomorrow for more sports news. That was Larry with the latest in sports. Now for a recap of tonight's headlines. An act to level the playing field between private sector and government goes into effect. Charges withdrawn in the firebombing case involving Earl Seco Grant and former magistrate Gon Emmanuel. And police search for a missing Portsmouth woman. In sports, Dive Dominica Hallem United secures major victory. And that's all the time we have for tonight. Drop us an email at media at 767news.dm. Friend us on Facebook and be sure to like our 767 News page. From all of us on the 767 News production team, I'm Alicia George wishing you a wonderful evening. And remember to stay tuned for the weather report right after the news. Boom, Miss and I, it's my time. To get on bad when I jam in and everybody Come celebrate with me But if you don't know me yet 
Don't worry, man, we go take a jam in a party. Yeah. Put one on in the air. 767 News.